In a lot of ways, I wish I could just reuse the opening from my Connor Geeky scouting report here. After all, it all applies. The great unicorn of sports, the player with size, speed, and skill, and all that. But after thinking about it, Yuri Slavkovsky provides a chance to look at something more interesting than just what a power forward is. His unique abilities add up to a player that is as tantalizing as he is hard to figure out. So. For this scouting report, I'm going to take you on my journey of figuring out a player comp for him. Yes, I'm going to break down his game as I always do, but at each step I'm going to look at one of three players that he reminds me of at this stage of development. Those three players are Mikko Rantanen, Patrick Laine, and Jesse Poljarvi. Why these three? Well, like Slavkovsky, they each played in the Finnish Liga their draft years in addition to being 6-4 plus on the wing. They provide the best comparison to Slavkovsky while giving us the best model to project what he can be once he makes the transition to the NHL. Now, my name is Dylan and before we get started, just a quick reminder to like this video so other hockey fans can find it, and to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our future draft content. Thanks, and on to the video. Obviously, the thing Slavkovsky is best known for is his size, but second to that is his scoring. His shot is, simply put, incredible. His release is quick and smooth, his accuracy is as good as any in this draft class, and the speed of the shot itself is unmatched. What I like the most about his shooting is that he relies on his wrister. He isn't out there trying to one-time it, leveraging his large frame to bazooka it past goaltenders. No, he wants to use his soft hands, get to the slot, and beat a goalie clean. That'll translate to any league in the world, and it'll keep him scoring as he ages much further down the road. There isn't too much more to say about it, honestly. He can snap it in close to a goalie and pick them apart from further away. The one thing I will say is I'd like to see him work on his one-timer and his placement with it, because that'll make him a nightmare matchup on an NHL power play, and is missing a little from his game right now. So, where does his shot rake among our three player comp candidates? From a pure shot comparison, it's Line, as he also had unbelievable accuracy and the shot speed to beat anyone from anywhere. Line had more of a one-timer and liked to shoot more from the wing rather than the slot like Slavkovsky does, but that same 40 goal potential is visible in Slavkovsky's shot. Now this is where things get interesting, watching him in the offensive zone. One thing all players that come from Finland, or at least from Liga, are great at is cycling the puck. Go watch any Finnish national team and check out the clinic they can put on against anyone. Slavkovsky has picked this up as well. He goes to the corners for puck battles or to chase the puck, he'll dip below the goal line to make or receive a pass, and he moves and resets based on what his teammates are doing, though this is his weakest element. Playmaking is something he can do, but it mostly comes from the system he's in. As I said, he could be part of a cycle and play very well in that, but what about when he's put in charge of things himself? His passes are pretty crisp for someone with such strong finishing abilities, and he makes sure to get enough oomph behind them that they get where they are going without getting picked off easily. Doesn't mean he always chooses the best time to pass or the best target, however. He tends to rely on his vision rather than a sixth sense for knowing where his teammates are, and that does give opportunities for defenders to read his eyes and jump into longer passing lanes. His surveying of the ice also can be a tad slow at times as well, something that we'll need to quicken when he gets to the NHL. Because of this, when playing for the Slovakian national team away from the Finnish cycle game, he will often just do things himself drive the net, muscle his way to the slot, or just throw it to the front of the net as a way of setting up teammates. Finally, as I said earlier, he wants to shoot from the slot, and so he's good at getting there and playing an east-west game. But curiously, he only really does this with the puck. He can move to the slot without it, but often it takes him several moments before he thinks of it and gets himself open. That is something he'll have to work on to maximize his potential in the NHL, getting himself open and behind defenses. It can often be the thing that separates the good from the great, and is honestly why I don't have Line as a comp here. 
His playmaking is also a step below where Rantanen was at the same age. Rather, I see him as a Jesse Pugliarvi. He plays the cycle, he battles on the boards using his size to protect the puck and lean on guys, and he'll take the puck to the net just like Pugliarvi did. There were plenty of attacks off the transition where Pugliarvi would slide over to the center slot just so he could attack the net as aggressively as he could, and Slavkovsky is exactly the same. Skating is always a fun thing to scout with the power forwards. They can often look slower than they are as their long legs mean they don't need as many strides to achieve the same distance and speed as a shorter player's more frequent movements. For Slavkovsky, I like a lot of what I see. The first thing that stood out to me was how tall he keeps himself. He really bends at the knees, not the back, and this lets him keep his head up and above many of the players around him. Yes, this is just good form, but many taller players struggle with it as they feel like they have to get lower to compensate for the fact that they are more top-heavy. Slavkovsky, rather, just relies on how strong he is on his skates to fight off defenders. He's good on his edges for quick start stops and quick turns, and always keeps his body between the defender and the puck, something all players should learn. He's plenty fast as his good form lets him maximize his strides, and that lets him lead charges and either put defenders back on their heels, or even get past them. He's used that to great effect, and I think it's one of the stronger elements to his game. This is where I see Rontanen, and all of the sly moves he makes to keep control of the puck. Defensively, he's okay. Really though, as a scoring winger, anything he can provide on the back end is mostly gravy. Instead, this is where I want to talk about his physicality. As stated before, he loves to drive to the net and battle in the corners, but if you notice, there isn't a ton of big hits. Slavkovsky rather uses his body to leverage and outmuscle guys to achieve a means to his own ends. This isn't to say he never lays down the hammer though. The one thing I find watching his bigger hits is that he doesn't have a lot of form. Really, it almost just looks like he was going too fast to stop and he bowls over whoever is caught in front of him. But that is where I think being in the NHL could really help him. An NHL team, both coaches and players alike, will have a field day showing him how he can level guys without taking himself out of a play. And once they do get that message across, boy is it going to be fun to watch him play. And again, I see Pugliarvi here. Pugliarvi was the most physical of our three potential player comps, and I see similar play from Slavkovsky. The physical nature to go to the net, the use of his body to protect the puck during board battles, and the want to get going in transition are all there in Slavkovsky just like they were in Pugliarvi. So, conclusion and player comp time. Normally, I would do a big reveal of who my comparison is, but given the nature of this video, that doesn't really work, and I'm guessing that you probably already know where I'm going with it. That's right, it's Jesse Pugliarvi. The style of play, the production both finishing and setting guys up, and, to be honest, the not quite superstar hockey IQ make this, for me, the best player comparison for Yuri Slavkovsky. Now, I can already hear the comment section blowing up with talk of Pugliarvi being a bust and his struggles in the NHL, blah blah blah. That isn't what I'm saying will happen with Slavkovsky. I'm only making a comparison based on style during their draft years. Do I think Slavkovsky could run into problems at the NHL level? Sure. I think he needs to be better at getting open when he doesn't have the puck. He needs to be better at reading the ice when he does have the puck. And finally, he'll probably need to get more comfortable playing on the outer sides of the offensive zone as NHL defensemen, and centers for that matter, aren't going to let him just walk into the slot with the puck or put it through their legs. As much as I lament the death of the poke check, it does still exist and it will give Slavkovsky nightmares if he doesn't account for it. But anybody with a shot like his, stick handling like his, and size with speed like his is going to find ways of scoring. Will he be a 40-goal guy like Line a, or a 100-point player like Rontanen? Maybe, but I doubt it. Line a finds ways of getting open for great shooting opportunities, and Rontanen knows where every player is on the ice without ever needing to look. Slavkovsky's hockey IQ will put a cap on his production, and if he isn't in a good situation with a coach and system that maximize his strengths, 
then that cap may be lower than many are suspecting. I think after a year or two in the NHL, we can start expecting Slavkovsky to be a 25, maybe 30 goal player with the ability to set up teammates fairly regularly and with the size to wear other teams down not just during a game, but especially during playoff series. Overall, that's still a very valuable player that any team should want, just maybe not the game and mold breaking unicorn that the hype would have us believe. Hey everybody, it's Dylan again. Thanks for watching this latest scouting report. If you'd like to check out the other scouting reports I've done as we get closer to the 2022 NHL Draft, just click on the playlist here and enjoy. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our other great hockey content. Thanks.